G'day guys, we're back here again with the late 2006 Apple iMac. In previous videos, we've installed and tested Mac OS X 10 Lion, as well as Windows 10 LTSC. So today, to round off the trilogy, I thought we would test out Linux, specifically Linux Mint. I've just written Linux Mint 21 64-bit to my cheap flash drive using Rufus for UEFI. So we'll try it out and see if it works. So I've put the flash drive in the back of the iMac, held down Alt to bring up the EFI menu. And as you can see, it hasn't detected it, which is unfortunate. So I think I will try and write Lubuntu Linux 64-bit again to a different flash drive targeting legacy BIOS and we'll see if that's detected. So I've written it to my cheap flash drive again. We'll pop it in the back and power it on holding Alt. Once again, wasn't detected. I have heard good things about a bootloader called Refined, which is designed for Macs. So I've written it to a blank CD and we'll try boot the bootloader and see if that detects our Linux flash drives. It has detected our CD. For some reason, there's an option for Windows and EFI boot. We'll obviously go EFI boot from CD and refine, there it is. I have put the Linux Mint UEFI flash drive in the back and we'll try boot that first. So we got the legacy Windows install on the hard drive again, legacy OS. So there it's legacy OS from whole disk volume, but it's got a flash drive. So we'll try that, got a logo and not found. The keyboard has locked up as well. I can't even enable the numlock or caps lock lights. So we will have to do a hard reset and we'll try load it in again. This time trying our Lubuntu flash drive targeting legacy BIOS. So again, going to EFI boot, CD. And this time there is a tux icon. So that looks promising. We've got boot Linux legacy from the whole disk volume with the tux icon and a little uh, flash drive logo. Or we've got boot legacy OS from Lubuntu 22. I think we'll try the tux icon first. Let's see if that works. Little tux logo and same error not found return from legacy loader and the keyboard has locked up we'll reset it once more and we'll try the lubuntu option we're back in refine this time we will choose the lubuntu 22 option the very last one hopefully that loads and still the same error so i've had a bit of a play around with refined and no matter what i tried I just wasn't able to get it to boot from our Linux flash drives. I had a look online. A lot of people had similar issues with this specific uh, late 2006 iMac. So instead, I have burnt Linux Mint to a DVD and we'll try and boot it from there. To eject a CD on these old iMacs in EFI, you just press F12. If you have an Apple keyboard, there'll be an eject key. But just on a standard uh, PC keyboard, just press F12. So we've put the Linux Mint DVD in and it has detected that there's a disk in there, but it shows up as Windows. I think we'll try boot that since that's their only option. Hopefully we do get into the live menu. And we are back to the dreaded CD-ROM boot menu. Um, if you haven't watched my video trying to install Windows on this old iMac, we did encounter this issue and it is quite a headache to bypass. It locks up the keyboard and mouse. And the solution is to mash the one key and enter key as fast as you can as soon as you select load from DVD. So we'll restart and we'll try that little trick. So we've reset it back in the EFI menu now. And as soon as I press enter to load from DVD, I'm gonna be constantly mashing one and return as fast as I can. I almost got it. We did get a one on the screen, but unfortunately it didn't uh, register the enter. So we'd have to try again. It did take me multiple attempts trying to get the Windows DVD to boot. I was able to get it on the second attempt. We briefly saw the Grub logo and now it's gone to this blinking cursor. Hopefully it is loading the live menu. It doesn't look promising. It has been about 30 seconds. We'll give it a few more minutes before we call it there though. So after a few minutes of letting it sit on the blinking cursor, there was no activity from the optical drive, but then all of a sudden it went crazy and was heavily reading, aggressively reading. And about 10, 15 minutes later, we did uh, appear on the desktop. So I was quite surprised. We'll see if there's Wi-Fi. There is no Wi-Fi detected. There is Bluetooth but no Wi-Fi. Check driver manager. Hopefully it finds our wireless card. If not, I do have my USB ones. And it did find our airport extreme card. So definitely do wanna use that, apply changes. I guess since they're non-free blobs, they don't uh, encourage using it. Now it says it's finished installing. So we'll close this off. Hopefully still don't have wireless connections. I think I will just grab my USB Wi-Fi adapter. So it does detect it, but it says device not ready. We'll give it a, another minute or two. Still says device not ready. It shouldn't take this long. I might grab a different wireless adapter. So my other Wi-Fi adapter works straight away within seconds. We'll connect to my internet. Unfortunately, it doesn't stay connected. It uh, is gone again. This wireless adapter usually works perfectly in Linux. So it's not because of the adapter. I was trying to connect again. All right, after a few false starts, it has finally connected. 
So we'll load up our default browser, which is Firefox. We'll install uBlock Origin for good measure and we'll see how well YouTube playback performs. I've installed uBlock Origin and we're just gonna try out one of my videos. We've set it to 720p. We'll keep it windowed because I remember on Windows, it did struggle full screen. Let's see how we go. We are dropping quite a few frames. About 30% frames. Skipping's not too bad. I think we'll lower it down to 480. We are still dropping frames at 480. Not as many, but we are still dropping. We'll try 360. I'm pretty sure that was perfect on Windows. We are still dropping frames. I guess we're using a stock driver for the graphics card. And that'll be why. If we go full screen, I'm expecting terrible dropping. And yeah, it's like a slideshow. As far as I know, there is really good support for AMD graphics cards on Linux. So we could install it, but again, this is a live CD, so we won't bother trying just yet. We'll keep it all as stock. So YouTube's not too bad. So if we go split screen, keep it windowed, go to theater mode, we've pretty much stopped dropping frames. We are dropping very, very few, but nothing to, nothing really noticeable. Let's see if we can go up to 480, split screen. And 480 is also a lot better. We've only dropped seven frames, eight frames. So split screen, not too bad for YouTube, but if you go full screen, it's quite terrible. Again, that is probably the graphics card, very, very old. We'll close off this and we'll try some local media playback. So we are just using Celluloid, which is the default media player for Linux Mint. And we'll start with H.264.1080, which did work perfectly on Windows. Visually, it's perfectly fine. Nice and smooth. We'll try a 4K. Uh, it didn't play at all on Windows, but we'll try it here. Uh, you can already see the butterfly wings are stuttering. Yeah, so still no good uh, 4K support. Wasn't expecting 4K though. But 1080 local definitely works, at least H.264. We've opened up Software Manager, which is sort of like an app store, but for Linux. And it did take quite a while to generate cash, but now it's loaded. We'll try and install a few games. I've installed two games to test. Open Arena, which is a Quake 3 Arena clone, and Pingus, which is a Lemmings clone. I did try and install a Minecraft clone, but unfortunately it wouldn't install. There was no error. It just, uh, it just instantly failed to install. We'll start off with Pingus, which is the Lemmings clone. So this is running pretty smoothly, no issues. But it is a very simple game. Yeah, no issues with this one. We'll close this off and we'll try something a bit more demanding, the Quake 3 Arena clone, Open Arena. So it loaded up in a window. We did change the settings under setup for full screen, 640 by 480, so fairly low res. We'll try a single player. Let's try a random map, we'll go fight. Keep it on fairly easy. A little bit of lag starting off, a little bit choppy. It is playable, but there's definitely lag spikes. There you go, another one. Visually, it looks really nice though. Massive lag spike there, another one. It's mostly playable. Back in the day, I probably would have enjoyed this. In 2025, I would say this is, uh, it's pretty annoying, the lag spikes. I'm sure if we had the correct graphics driver, and if it wasn't running from a uh, live CD, so from RAM, Probably be a lot smoother. But as it is, live CD, stock graphics driver. Yeah, big lag spikes. You can see in Task Manager, the CPU's idling around 5%, but we have used 2.2 gig of RAM. That is because we are running from a live CD, so everything's running from RAM. If you did a full install, it would obviously be a lot lower. As for getting Linux to boot at all on this late 2006 iMac, it was a huge headache. I couldn't get any of my USB installers to run. Even using something like Refine Boot Manager still wouldn't load. I did end up having to run it to a DVD, but even that was a hassle to get it to actually boot. I had to mash the one and enter key. Again, similar to the Windows 10 install. Once I made it through all those hurdles, it did take around 15 minutes to boot to the desktop. I'm not too sure how well this would actually go installing it to the local hard drive. But for me personally, I would just use Windows 10 on this just to squeeze a little bit more lifespan out of it. Out of the box, our built-in wireless card 
just didn't work. Even after installing the third party driver, still didn't work. Ended up having to use an external Wi Fi adapter. The first wireless adapter I tried, again, didn't work but my old reliable one did work, thankfully. The sound does work out of the box, which I was impressed with because on Windows, I had to install the driver from Bootcamp. But unfortunately, we are using a generic graphics driver. YouTube playback performance was pretty similar to Windows 10, maybe a bit slower, again, because of the lack of graphics drivers. But split screen worked fine. It's just when you go full screen, you have a pretty bad time. Light web browsing was also fine. Local media playback up to 1080p, H.264, perfectly playable. But obviously 4K was a slideshow. Very, very light games like Pingus worked fine, but slightly heavier things like Open Arena, which is a Quake 3 Arena clone, was just a bit too heavy for it. I reckon if we got the correct graphics card driver or potentially lowered the graphics settings for Open Arena, it would have ran a lot smoother. We did get some lag spikes and it wasn't very enjoyable. I personally will be sticking to Windows 10 LTSC that we installed in a previous video. I think that'll do it for today. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.